I've got the answer right here, ladies and gentlemen, to everything that ails you. Now step right up. One who acts like a duck about his salves and remedies. The cruel practice of making money on people's worries appeared throughout the years as quackery. I said cured of backache, nervousness, and oh, any number of diseases. Welcome back to another episode of the Quackery Podcast. Here, as always, Dr. Will the Pill with my main man, John Boy here, Lil Pete. Another week of the wild world of the quarantine quackery. Basically, we're having to, we're not able to get together and laugh, love, and, and live in person. So, we're having to do it over the Skype. But I hope you guys enjoy this week's episode. It is on the infamous Typhoid Mary. John, do you know who Typhoid Mary is? You heard of her? No. I mean, I've heard of Typhoid Fever. Is that going down the same route? Yeah. Okay. That's right. I've never heard of Typhoid Mary. Well, good. I'm glad. I was worried that you would ruin it. Um, <laughs> so you know what Typhoid Fever is? No, I don't. I just I just know the word. You've heard of it, though. <laughs> You've heard of yeah. it. Okay. Well, good. No, that's good, man. So some of our listeners might have heard of Typhoid Fever. Some of them might have heard of Typhoid Mary. You've come to the right place. I'm going to explain both of them and tell you why it's a relevant topic right now. Ooh. It's very relevant. Yeah. Cool. All right. So let's start with Typhoid Fever. Let's get the boring stuff out of the way, the science stuff. So typhoid fever is, is a bacteria. It technically goes by the name of Salmonella enterica serotype typhi bacteria. So yes, bacteria. So the best way I could describe it would be like, you know, like when you get like a one of those 24-hour stomach viruses where you're throwing up like crazy yeah. and then it goes away? This would be like that, but with the bacteria that lasts a lot longer. So it's spread by the oral fecal route. Wait, mm, what? Yummy. <laughs> oral. Yeah. Is it, that's not. That's how. That's not. That's uh, how. A to M, is it? <laughs> you better believe it's A to M. Your favorite route. From the rooter to the tutor, Dude, baby. What? <laughs> but from the tutor to the rooter. So. The reason why John is especially jokey tonight and laughy tonight is because he sees my hair. Yeah. I, my wife gave me a Pauly D blowout because my hair has gotten so long I won't let her cut it. Oh, oh yeah. And by the way, before we get too much into typhoid fever, it's kind of, I kind of missed the timing here. I'm drinking a Bloody Mary ah. for my drink tonight. <laughs> hey, I'm kind of drinking that. I got a V8. <laughs> You got a V8? My man. So, yeah, you're drinking a Bloody Mary just with the no vodka. Just put some vodka in that We bitch. haven't drank uh, any alcohol in going on three weeks. That's yeah, awesome, we, man. I was going to say, if you would have said three months, I would have known you're lying because we did podcasts when yeah. you were, you said you were having a beer and a Nipotides. <laughs> yeah. It's, so what do you guys do during the Talk Murder podcast episodes? We, it sucks. I mean, it doesn't you suck, pretend, but no. Or do you actually drink? We just don't do... We just don't drink. You just do heroin. Yeah. <laughs> We're just doing this for <laughs> until the wedding. Mm-mm-mm. I love that. Okay. So back to the fecal oral route. Oh, right. <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of your wedding. Oh, what? <laughs> Isn't that what the kids do? Never mind. Let's uh. just move on. What are some of the symptoms of typhoid fever? So poor appetite, headaches, general aches and pains. Wait, no, this was for... That time of the month. Oh, no, this is right. <laughs> Fever as high as 104 degrees Fahrenheit, lethargy, and diarrhea. So it's just, like I said, a really bad... It's like a stomach virus, but this is a bacteria. The WHO, the World Health Organization, estimates that still, today, the global typhoid fever disease burden is at 11 to 20 million oh cases annually, resulting in om- over 150,000 deaths a year still. Oh, my God. I know. I probably should have saved that for the end. That's a pretty big bombshell to drop Yeah, we here. should just close down everything. <laughs> Doesn't it? I would. I mean, sh- shit, what do we have? 60,000 uh, cases of COVID, and then this kills 150,000 people a year, and people don't even know it exists. We should shut down and- everything and panic. <laughs> That's what we should do. Oh, yeah. So I, I, I included this next slide. I'll put it up on quackerypodcast.com just because I don't understand why, but this is, you guys will see if you go to the website, it's a picture of two males' torsos, I assume, 
Uh, and they've definitely pulled the covers down far enough where you can see the top of the key. <laughs> see it <laughs> and it's a, the, the most unnecessary bush shot i think i've ever seen you don't see the genitals it's tastefully just covering the genitals but the bush is in full display <laughs> What? The most unnecessary, it shows that, okay, so sometimes you get oh, this, God. there's this rash you can get. And so this is a picture of a five-day <laughs> rash versus a more advanced rash. But I put it on here because it's hilarious. Yeah. That you, like, literally, the, the rash stops, you know, maybe two inches above the happy trail. Yeah. You know, the, 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 the top of the pubes there. And then they just go on another two, three more <laughs> inches where you can see the whole bush, man. But anyway, so let's talk, <laughs> let's, uh, talk about the treatment. So it's a bacteria, right? So yeah. antibiotics, right? Um, there is some resistance, but you can still you typically use fluoroquinolones, cephalosporins, including you can use uh, azithromycin. That'd be like a Z pack. In most regions, it will work. Um, there's some resistance to all those, but it mostly it's pretty still works pretty good. So the reason why you'd have so many deaths is because you don't have access to these kind of medicines. Uh, so these deaths so are it's not something we need to panic these about. These deaths yeah. are in like Ethiopia and Africa mm-hmm. areas, right? Yeah, okay. yeah. So yeah. And well, it's everywhere. The only people who get it are people who have poor wastewater. Yeah, treatment. okay, gotcha. So, like, if you're not able to get clean drinking water, you're gonna. This is gonna spread like crazy, and they're not gonna be able to afford to treat it, you know, really well. So, there's also a vaccine for it. Two forms. There's an injectable one and an oral one, where you actually take capsules. And a lot of people will take that before they go to places that, you know, where they're like, oh, don't go there. Don't drink the water from there. You know. That can be one of the yeah. reasons why if you go somewhere. So and and don't eat the yogurt um, either in some of those countries. I've made that mistake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I mean, got you good. Yeah. Huh? So in Afghanistan, a lot of times they'll give you pro- like in, prophylactic antibiotics. Yeah. yeah. So in Afghanistan, they don't have you know refrigerators, but yet they still have yogurt. Oh. <laughs> <So. laughs> mm, how was it? Did it taste good? Yeah, it tasted fine until. The was next two days when I was, <laughs> basically, oh. you know, expelling everything that, I've it, th- eaten for us to talk weeks. about antibiotics oh. not, or, or, uh, or probiotics, yeah. you know, y- negative. What would it be? No, that would be antibiotics. <laughs> Shit, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> talk about bad biotics. There you go. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm the doctor on the show and I know my way around words. Let's go to to Mary, Typhoid Mary herself. So, who was it? Well, her name was Mary Mallon, and she lived from 1869 to 1938, and she was born in Ireland. No, that... Is that... Look no. at the Irish. <laughs> she immigrated to the U.S. sometime in the 18... 18- that's uh, that's an English accent. Yeah. See, I, you know, they, they're always after my, me lucky charms. <laughs> So I don't know if you know a lot about Irish immigrants in that period of time. It was basically a well, definitely a working class of people, but she actually landed a pretty good job because she had a talent. She had a knack for cooking. She famously um, was hired by a lot of wealthy families to cook for them. The most notable would be the Warren family. So Charles Henry Warren and his family in 1906 hired her on because they were rich enough where they could bring a cook to their vacation home and a whole staff. They brought a whole staff of people. He was a he was a wealthy banker in New York in Manhattan, and so they, they actually rented this house on Oyster Bay. So, you know you know where Long Island is, right? Yeah. See, so it's long as hell. It's like <laughs> it lives up to its name. It almost extends from New York all the way to yeah. like Pass Rhode Island. Yeah. It's so damn. So anyway, the end of Long Island, the south side is the Hamptons, right? The north side that faces Rhode Island, that's where this was, the Oyster Bay on the north northern coast of Long Island. So she cooked for them for a while here, and her specialty was peach ice cream, which, oh, you know, down so here in good. South Carolina, oof, I yeah. hope I don't ruin this for you. You know, we used to have the Peach uh, Festival where I'm from, Gilbert. Oh, Gilbert. Gilbert Peach Festival. Ooh, that sounds had- good. You know that um, a lot of people don't know this. We're going to educate our listeners a little more here. South Carolina whoops the shit out of Georgia's ass in peaches, and they're the peach state. Yeah. We grow way more. Yeah. So ha. My in your yeah. face, Georgia. My uh, my English teacher was Miss Peach. <laughs> and like, <laughs> did she have a nice ass? Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she, whoa. she was. Hot. Uh, oh yeah, I guess so. If she won Miss Peach. Yeah. 
She was hot. And then her nice. daughter won Miss Peach. Dang. Legacy <laughs> Peach. That's, hey, you, the, you know, you lay the seeds and the next peach will grow. <laughs> oh, I, had, I still have such a crush on her. She's <laughs> The peach doesn't fall far from the tree, my friend. <laughs> All right. So the issue with the peach ice cream, though, was that Mary was not washing her hands really good. And so August 27th to September 3rd, six of the 11 people in the house, because they brought a whole team of people, 11 people. They were all eating ice cream because it was great. They all contracted typhoid fever. So there was this gentleman who was a sanitary engineer which I know it sounds like a fancy word for a janitor, <laughs> but back then that's he was not a janitorial engineer. Uh, no offense to any janitors to listen to this program. I just want to clarify that he was... So let's just go with his background here, and then I'll tell you why he's involved with this. So Dr. George A. Soper, he was a military epidemiologist in the Army, and he started helping the state of New York deal with typhoid outbreaks. Actually, it's cool. I saw an article where they... They actually wrote an article about Dr. Fauci yeah. and now and Dr. Soper with typhoid in, in New York. And they, they like mirrored them. They were like, they're both pretty similar dudes and they're they're pretty cool. Guy. Fauci's a pretty cool guy. George Soper, he actually, the Warren family hired him to check out, to investigate what the hell was going on. And he published his results in the JAMA, which is the Journal um, of American Medicine. You, we've talked about that in some other episodes. So he was legit, dude. He's got articles in there. Like, he, he's he's a legit dude. So he, he actually was very confused initially. He thought that it was the oysters they were eating because they were eating a lot of, like, raw oysters, yeah. which would, I mean, which would make sense, but that they don't typically catch typhoid from oysters. So then he was like, well, you know, he looked into the cook and he realized that Mary Mallon was the first identified healthy carrier of Salmonella typhi in the U.S. So they didn't know about healthy carriers of diseases before this, like asymptomatic carriers. They're basically like, if you're sick, you're sick. And if you're not, you're not. Yeah. Right. So this was a big step forward. Wow. So he actually started after she got done working for them because obviously they, you know, once they done vacation and they're like, yeah, this this cook, uh, you know, I don't think we're gonna keep her on. <laughs> so he started like stalking her like a like a sleuth, you know. He's like here to there. He's following her around where she's cooking for these people, and he finds out obviously she, all these people she's cooking for are getting sick, and he keeps trying to like meet up with her and get samples of like her feces or urine, her blood. And she's like, Jesus ditches him every time. She's like, get away from me. You creep. I'm not giving you my poopy. <laughs> I'm healthy. What the hell is wrong with you? I, there's nothing wrong yeah. with me. So instead of listening to, to Soper, she just keeps on cooking. So he followed her through serving eight families where seven of the families Caught ty- who contracted typhoid, so twenty two people and some some of those people died. It it's a mixed reporting on how many. There was like some people said only two people. The, some some sources I found found more, and then later on we'll get into some other figures uh, relating to her. But um, here here's a here's a quote from um, George Soper here. It was out. It was at this house that I had my first interview with Mary. I expected to find a person who would be as desirous as I was for an explanation of the way in which the typhoid had followed her. Certainly, she could not have failed to, to be impressed by the strange fatality with which did the disease had broken out wherever she went. But my interview was short. It started in the kitchen and ended almost immediately at the basement door. And he says Mary Mallon refused then and would continue to flatly refuse to talk to any talk to Soper or anyone else. Jesus. Because she wants to keep working. Like she has a good job as a cook. She's good yeah. at it. She makes the best peach ice cream this side of you know, the Mason Dixon line. Well, maybe she really didn't think that it was that she was doing it. Like she d- yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean she clearly didn't, and we'll get into to why that's part of the reason why this whole uh, it, it, this is on the episode of quackery, but so what? A, a t- eventually, Soper had to go to the police, and he said this woman is getting people sick who who are dying, and I know that she's 
involved with getting them sick. She won't let me, you know, he, he was hired by New York City to investigate typhoid. And so basically they chased her down. He brought it to the Department of Health, who, who was working for her. And so the, Dr. Josephine Baker, who worked also for the Department of Health, along with Soper and another doctor, Dr. Briggs, they went with the police in search of Mary Mallon for testing. She eluded them. She she It was a police chase. What? They chased her for five hours, and eventually they got her, and they arrested her, and they made her give them the samples, and they put her in jail. Wait, they jailed her? They jailed her. Well, I oh, mean, eventually, yeah. I guess if you resist arrest. Yeah, that's true. You know, but so they got the samples, apparently. You get someone in prison, you know, you're going to get all their bodily yeah. fluids. They got nowhere for them to go. So when her stool tested positive for Salmonella typhi, she was then quarantined, which is another reason why this episode yeah. is relevant right now. This is an example of quarantine, and, and we'll, that will, I'll tell you why that's the way that, you know, what happened is quackery. So so she went to this island. It's called North Brother Island. Have you heard of this place? Mm, I, no. I don't know. I don't know how many people out there who are listening have heard of the Brother Islands. There's a North Brother Island and a South Brother Island. And you won't believe where these are. So, like, there's a long extension of land that's like the tip of it is Manhattan, yeah. right? Where all the big buildings are. And then you've got Long Island and the tip of that is like the it's Bronx, It's just like right? a little, yeah. There's a gap in between there. It's like a bay. Yeah, I know what I don't know what, I can't remember what it's called. They're, they're in there. There's two islands in there. Are they like habitated or are they used for prisons? Yeah, well, not now. The, so they're, they are quarantine no islands. No way, still? So if you, if you look, yeah, no, no one lives oh. there anymore. If you go there, there's pictures of people who went around there and they're like, I swear they look haunted as shit. There are all these old dilapidated hospitals what? and like medical cottages and all this shit like all falling down. It's crazy. I'm looking it man. up right now, I'll, dude. I've got to see. I'll put some pictures. <laughs> yeah, I got some pictures. Well, uh, listen. Okay, I got pictures coming up, but I will show you. Anyway, it was a place called Riverside Hospital in North Brother Island. So. In 1909, she tries to sue the health department for detaining her because she's like, why the hell am I being detained? But she did not win the case. However, uh, the next year, 1910, there was a new health con- uh, health commissioner who would let her go because they're like, we can't let her. We can't keep this woman in prison, yeah. basically. So but before they let her go, while the time she was quarantined on this North Brother Island, they tried everything to like try to treat her. They tried... La- uh, just a shitload of laxatives, which would make sense, I, I guess, if you think about it back in 19 o- 1909. They tried giving her brewer's yeast and a chemical called hexamethylamine, which I, I looked it up. I-, I couldn't find any documented use medically for that. It's just some toxic chemical. Jesus. Nothing worked. And then also, so they said, well, here's what we should try to do. We should try to remove her gallbladder. Someone just theorized that, hey, maybe her gall- gallbladder is the problem, right? But she said, "Hell no, you're not. You're not taking that. Taking my gallbladder." So, like, go back to I said 1910. This new health commissioner is like, "I'm not going to have this woman's, you know, locked up on my on my watch. She can go. She's free to go, but she's not allowed to work as a cook anymore." What do you think she did? <laughs> I mean, that's all she knows, obviously. <laughs> that bitch kept on cooking. Yeah. <laughs> that peach ice cream ain't gonna churn itself, my friend. <laughs> so, she was released. And she started working, and she got 25 more people sick. I mean, what else is she going to do? So, like, construction? I mean, she's a cook. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, I don't know, man. You can, <laughs> you know. I'm a pharmacist, but, you know, I'm quitting that job to, to be a yeah. podcaster. You know, you can always you can always pivot. Pivot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> so, yeah, here's a news clipping. Typhoid Mary must get a new job. Released from quarantine after three years. Three years. So, like, Jesus. A, it was crazy. She was in the news like crazy. You know, like those like yeah. cartoons, those caricature cartoons and stuff. There's a bunch of them of her. Like, it's like this devil, you know, getting everyone Did sick. Did they give her any money? Was, like, I would have just, you know, gave her. She lo- No, she she sued and she lost her. She lost the Jesus. case. 
She so she changed her name so she could be hired on because everybody in New York knew who Typhoid Mary was, Ty- Mary Mallon. So she went by Mary Brown, <laughs> <laughs> Brown like the doo doo on her hands. <laughs> so they said she killed at least two more people, including some uh, doctors and nurses who, because at one point she cooked at a hospital for a while, which is awful. But here's a good explanation of where the South North Brother Island, South Brother Island. So it would be directly above Queens. And directly to the yeah. west of Rikers Island, if anyone knows where that is. So that's like LaGuardia is south of Rikers. Yeah. And Manhattan would be like, you know, over to the west of the, the brother. But they're like, dude, this is like, would be the most prime ass real estate. And it's abandoned. I'm Isn't looking at some of the photos on Google, man. I cannot believe this. This looks like from Silent Hill. You know that uh, kind yeah. of like Silent Hill game? Yes, <laughs> it's exactly right, y'all. Go check yeah. it out because... Needless to say, after she got out, got out and started cooking again, and they found out she was sent right back on to North Brother Island to her nice little cottage there, and she would spend the rest of her life. There's there. no squatters that live in. I'm really interested in these little islands, right? Now. <laughs> I am too now, man. That's why I put a, a picture of this a map yeah. on here. I'll put this on QuackeryPodcast.com. It's it's weird. It is weird. It's really weird. There used to be. I saw some old pictures. There used to be some really big buildings there and maybe people think it's haunted or something but that's the crazy part is like you think about how prime that real estate is how expensive land is in in new york now granted there's no roads that go to it but well this is really you get a rich person by the whole island so i'm looking at this photo right now the tagline is classroom books so apparently there must have been some school there and it's just all these books laid out on the floor in this like old ass building it's Ugh. so weird, man. Like, they're just all Ugh. thrown everywhere. This is the weirdest thing Ugh. I've ever seen, man. <laughs> I, I try. I told you, man, it's, I, it's really yeah. weird. So there's plenty of places where there's abandoned shit in, in America, everywhere yeah. in the world. I understand that. But this is next to some of the most expensive real estate in the world. Yeah, that's Manhattan. True. It's right next to Manhattan. Yeah, you can see the no city there. From, from there. You definitely can. And it's beautiful that's views, just... too. I mean, the best... You know that yeah. I mean, there's. I'm looking at an abandoned boat like that. It, that has a motor still on it. Like, why is no one? Yeah. I would take that boat. It must be like uh, what's the, what's the movie? The um, Amityville Horror. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just like get in the boat and they just go. <laughs> like the hell with this place. Yeah, this is cool, man. Yeah, I know, man. I feel like I'd love to visit there sometime. Yeah, it's... would you be down? Yeah, I mean, I'll, we could do like a live show from dude, there, they, be in there with all three podcasts. Because like the first part would be one of us would die, so then you could do the podcast on the yeah. murder, and then one of us would, the rest of us would go missing, and then Savannah <laughs> could do the episode on us going missing. And you know, there's there's old hospitals, so quackery, boom, it's a three and one. Uh, s- sadly enough, on uh, Christmas morning, 1932, someone came to deliver something to the. Uh, North Brother Island, and they found that Mary had suffered some sort of a stroke. She was just on the paralyzed on the floor of her bungalow, and she never walked again. So, but she only lived six more years after that. To 1938, she died in the Riverside Hospital, November 1938. So she stayed in that hospital. She was, I mean, quarantined for that yeah. long. So as soon as she died, her body was hurried away to. Uh, St. Raymond's, they said, okay, this is actually kind of a conspiracy. You'll like this. So they said that she was immediately hurried. Her body was, because they thought it was just like straight toxic, yeah. right? So she was hurried away, burned, and buried in St. Raymond's in the Bronx, which I got a picture here. I'll put it up on quackerypodcast.com. It's a actual picture of her tombstone here, which actually looks pretty new. Yeah, it looks... To be almost 100 years old. Maybe but, they replaced the actual tombstone recently. They they do that a maybe. lot if like one of them, like if someone of prominent or pay, someone of they care. Yeah, that yeah. could be it because it definitely because I don't think they carved yeah, that in a hundred years ago. I mean, look how oh like, they certainly could. Oh, could they? I don't know, dude. They did way more intricate shit than we they oh, do okay. now, man. We're like lazy, man. You ain't seen unless the aliens helped them, like the pyramids, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's a story for another day. So they then another report said it's which they call it like an urban legend here that there was a 
a postmortem autopsy that they what that she wasn't burned right away and that they took out her gall sto- gall or gallbladder and she had gall stones that had typhoid in them. So the whole reason why this is like a big conspiracy is that if you remember the first time that she was quarantined, they tr- offered to remove her gallbladder and she yeah. said no. So a bunch of people say, well, maybe if they would have done it, she would have been fu- she would have not been you know uh, contagious anymore. But uh, then a lot of people are like, well, that just sounds like the you know the government trying to cover their ass. Like, well, we tried. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, we didn't keep her in prison for. All those years, you know, what, 20-something years? That's sad, uh, man. It is. So so let's talk about why this is on this episode other than the funny, re- you know, the things they treated her with and her running from the cops and the whole thing like that. So by the time she had died, um, they actually found 400 other healthy carriers of salmonella typhi. But she was the only one who was forcibly confined or victimized as an unwanted ill who was kept on an island. She was the, well, only was one. It the other ones. Oh. They weren't getting people sick. They just found out later. Yeah, well, they weren't. They weren't yeah. cooking and using poor hygiene. That's the thing. So the the reason why that is quackery is so they did all these things. They confined her for years and years. Basically, put her in prison. Yeah. But th- what what they said was they never truly explained to her why. Like she was still under the impression that they were just being mean to her. They she she knew she wasn't sick, so she all she thought it was all bullshit. And no one ever sat down with her and said, "You're not using good enough hygiene. You are not sick, but you are carrying the disease, so you can give it to other people, even though you're not Jeez. sick." They never truly, it, from what I read, they never truly explained that to her. And that's quackery. That's bullshit. Plain and simple. I it mean, is. It's very sad. Now, who was the um? Was so you said this was like the governor of New York that did this, or I mean, who was in charge of all this? Like to put her. So yeah, so it was the um the health commissioner of the health department of New York, New York City Health. Okay, department. Okay, gotcha. Because I know it wasn't a. Po- so that's why that's why when the health the, the commissioner changed, he said, "No, we got to let oh, her out." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But we just right. got to tell yeah. her she can't work. That she can't work as a cook anymore. So she was only there for three years, and then just bingo, boom, just that quick. Right after she started cooking, twenty five more people got sick, and they, you know, so the funny, a lot of people say that the big boom of typhoid in new york they all think oh it was because of typhoid mary if it wouldn't have if she wouldn't have started giving it to a few people it never would have gotten all these people which i think is bullshit the reason why it got so much attention is one reason one reason only because rich people's health and lives are are more important to the to the public eye and to the government to everyone than poor people poor people got typhoid at that time rich people who were vacationing at the Hamptons or Oyster Bay or anywhere like that who could hire their own uh, you know, yeah, cook yeah, yeah, and yeah. gardener and all that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They didn't catch it because they were rich. They they didn't drink like soup, yeah. you know, shitty sewer water. They they had the best of hygiene. So when those people got gotcha, sick, yeah. then heads had to roll, right? That's an it's you know, very interesting thing uh there. I think the the big lesson we can learn from this now would be with this whole COVID-19 quarantine right now and how to how we think about quarantining people. Obviously, we're not, you know, singling people out and putting them on an island, but we do have to understand. So this is a this is a disease that has COVID-19 is a disease that has asymptomatic carriers from what we understand. So I think the, the two things we need to understand would be that people need to understand why they're being quarantined the same way that typhoid Mary was never really explained to. You can be healthy and not might be symptomatic and you may be you know a transmitter of the disease so the reason why you're quarantining is you know you you may not have caught it you may have caught it and you just have no you know no symptoms that's why you wear a mask because someone today was like oh well a cloth mask ain't gonna do shit against this thing no no it's not for you catching it it's gonna do something though for you, if you cough, yeah, yeah. it's going to catch a lot of your cough. So other people, if you're an asymptomatic carrier, they won't catch it. So there's still obviously a lot that yeah. we can learn about this. Yeah. What other 
where they're, this was maybe not necessarily the longest one, but I thought it was a cool one because, you know, what, I, me growing up, I, I always thought the typhoid Mary, and I had no basis for this whatsoever, but in my mind, I always thought this was an old London, like basically like medieval times, and she was like a lady yeah. of the night who was like sleeping with all these people and yeah, giving yeah, them yeah. typhoid, and like she would just be like, <laughs> Yeah, you know, like you have typhoid now, and I'm not gonna catch it either. But she just was a cook, man, who kind of got a bad. I mean, granted, when they told her to stop cooking, obviously that's all that's what yeah. she knows how to do. So I understand that's a tough. You know, I mean, if you see people who you've been cooking for dying, you would think you could at least give it a shot. Yeah. you know, hey, maybe you take up anything else, you pick up trash or something. Dude, I, don't know. I was all right, so. You mentioned the mask earlier. Now, the other day, because I, you know me, I'm all about, you know, no force vaccinations. Oh, you can't tell me uh-huh. to wear a mask and all that stuff. But I was thinking the other day, and you're going to be proud of me. Okay, <laughs> what if I say, what if the government's like, you have to wear a mask when you go outside? And initially, I'd be mm. like, I'm not doing that. But then again, I already wear pants i can't walk around with my dong hanging out <laughs> you know what i'm saying this is true. so i already conform to those rules that's a very and good i never point. thought about you're that you're already giving away some social liberties yeah, by, yeah. by just stepping outside and your door so i was yeah. thinking about that the other day i was like you know what i i don't know i i mean if they told me to wear a mask like it makes sense now in my head because i wouldn't walk out with my long dong slonging out you know Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or would I? <laughs> it's true. You might scare you might scare some some children in the neighborhood. Yeah. I don't know. I was just trying to make you proud. <laughs> I love that man. No, it's actually interesting that it, it, uh, I hate wearing those damn masks. I'll Do tell you have you to right wear now. them at work? As much as I know how important they are, yeah, yeah, I hate it. They're so uncomfortable. Like basically, I'm all like, like you were saying, I'm like, you knew I would be for them, and, and I am. You know, as far as but I also, another thing with it, so here in South Carolina, I don't know if y'all saw, we're basically lifting our quarantine. And it's so far, they said it's going good. We had the less, the least cases we've ever had this weekend. Oh, wow. Um, past weekend. Mm-hmm. Now, we'll see if that lasts because it yeah, takes, two a, weeks, uh, you know, so. a little while for people yeah. to get sick. But, you know, God, those those masks, you know, you wear them for so long, you know they're good. And then at work, I'm just like, oh, my God, I have to get some, you know, get some fresh air. My face gets so hot, you know, nose hurts. So I'm just like, you know what the hell with it? Let's just see what happens. Uh, dude, I. All right. Anything else before we wrap up here with old typhoid Mary? Uh, no, man. I um, I'm glad I finally know what that is. Yeah, it's kind of cool to to learn about it here. You know what typhoid fever is, and you know who typhoid Mary is. You know, you hear about him talk about talk about her on the news all the time. So now you are informed, ladies and gentlemen. There's something about Mary. Oh, dude, you know, uh, rest in peace, uh, Ben Stiller's dad. Oh, I know, dude, Jerry. Yeah. You know who else died? Um, Fred. Um. Damn the um the dude who's on like Best in Show and a bunch of that stuff that comedian he died yesterday oh, too. Oh shit! He looks like he's the one. I get him confused with the dude who's the dad on a uh, American Pie. Yeah. He's not that guy. Yeah, but yeah, he's yeah. On a he's bunch of he's on um, you know what I'm talking yeah about? he's on that movie The Grand too. He's I don't know if you've seen that. It's got Woody Harrelson in it. I, I know you're talking about. Yeah, he's like uh yeah oh, okay yeah that sucks dude man. yeah I know that's it sucks yeah dude it's hilarious was yeah. r.i.p so anyway if uh i guess that'll do it for typhoid mary this week so if this episode really quacked y'all up and you want to support the crew please head over to quackerypodcast.com slash join to become an official quackhead make sure and hit that subscribe button follow us on social media facebook twitter instagram check out our website obviously all the, we're gonna post everything on the on the uh, each episode on there so you can check out all the pictures. Um, make sure and rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. It makes a huge difference. Tell your friends about us. And as always, keep calm and quack on. Ah, ah. Here's what I'll do. I'll wear the orange one with the top hat, and then we'll look like Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs>